So today I have Brittany S. Lewis with us. She has a book coming out with Disney. It is called The Undead Truth of Us. It is available for pre-order on Amazon and at Barnes & Noble. And it is coming out on August 9th. And I'm so excited for it. It is a young adult contemporary horror novel. Brittany, why don't you tell us about The Undead Truth of Us? Here's the cover and I love the cover. It's gorgeous. If you could kind of tell us a little bit about the book and what inspired you to write it. Okay, so I will just say, so okay. I'll just repeat it. The Undead Thank Truth you. of Us is about 16-year-old Zara Young, who, after her mother's mysterious death, starts seeing zombies. And then she meets an undead boy who shows her all the ways love can change you. And I it felt super inspired to write this book because I was in college, and it was, like, my last year. And I was really hoping to explore humanity with the use of zombies and also love and how love can change you in different ways. And I just felt like having a paranormal twist on that um, would, like, really do it justice. Yes. I know one of your comparables was Warm Bodies, and I loved that movie. And, like, I love that, like... Just the, I don't know, you don't really put zombies and like love in the same category. So it's like when you can, it's just, it makes it that much more interesting. Super agree because Warm Bodies is definitely a comp for this book. I love how um, in that story you're getting a perspective from a zombie. I think that's really, really cool. And so I try to like play on that same idea. Um, but a lot of it is very much uh, in the main character's head. And so you're trying to figure out like, What's happening? Is it real? Is it not real? Um, and then also, why is it happening? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I know, like, I read a little bit. I know you say that there's, like, an unreliable uh, narrator as well, morally great characters. I mean, it's got all the best ingredients to make, like, a delicious novel. So can you tell us exactly, like, what all, like, how were you inspired? Were you inspired always to the right horror? Or, like, have you always been into that genre? And kind of just let us know, like, what, what really brought this book about? Yeah, I've always loved horror. Like, I remember being in fifth grade, and one of my favorite movies at the time was A Nightmare on Elm Street, um, the original one. I watched it all. I, I don't know why I was obsessed with it. I just really liked the story, which sounds kind of awful, pulling it back about it. But I've always loved horror as a genre. I've always loved that in comedies. I feel like horror and comedy brings out different sides of emotion that are very similar because it forces reaction out of whoever's like listening to it watching it or reading it um but for this book in particular was your question like what made me inspired to write it is that what you said yeah 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 so for this book in particular I was super inspired this was I think my fifth book writing my fifth book they've all been in very similar genres um like all being kind of contemporary but with a twist okay. and this is my first like hardcore like paranormal kind of fantasy bent horror kind of story. Um, and I really wanted to dive into one. I love zombies. I also saw that like there was a comeback kind of starting to trickle through when mm -hmm. it comes to stories. Um, I know that the walking dead has been around for forever. Um, and I started writing this story. I was very anxious that like everyone's going to be super tired of hearing about zombies but I really love zombies. And so I felt very inspired, one, doing that. And then also just seeing more representation in the genre. Like, I really wanted to have my main character front and center in this being her story and telling it. But while also talking about very relevant themes like grief, losing the loss of a parent, um, and then also mixing in dance because um, I'm a dancer. And also the main character and her mother share the love of dance. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love it when like authors put their own, I don't, their heart into it as well and like leave their bits in there. I love that. So Yay. Brittany, can you tell us like, um, I, I read everything on your blog. So I'm like, I'm going into it. I mean, actually, like, I don't know anything, but can you tell us like how I know that you had like a crazy experience getting an agent. You actually had a few offer offers. And so how was that experience like finding your agent? It was super surreal and it happened all at once and I swear it was super slow up to it because I was in the query trenches since you've read it like I, I would say I was in the query trenches for probably 10 years um, total before anything happened with the book and um, prior to finding my current literary agent her name is Caitlin she's amazing I was previously agented in 20 
17 and it was only for about maybe a year, year and a half. We never did anything with that manuscript that we had. Like I wasn't submission for about a year, nothing really happened. And after kind of digging into more of that agent's history, I didn't really see that they had clients that were like super happy with them. And so I felt bad because I like, I was just really excited and I wanted to be represented. And so I just jumped in at the first person to ever offer me anything. Um, and so I went ahead and I took my manuscript off submission and I went into looking again um, for a literary agent. And I saw that Caitlin was looking for more stories that were contemporary, but with a twist. I also saw that Caitlin um, likes a broad range of stories and has so many different authors on her list. Like if you've read Dial A for Aunties, that's an adult contemporary rom-com. She represents that. Or if you've, re if you've read anything by Nafisa Azad, which is like fantasy to the extreme, um, that's a totally different genre as well. I know that Alex Astor with Lightlark has a book coming out with Caitlin as well. And like these are all different stories told by so many different people across the genre. So I was very excited to submit to Caitlin, but I did not know if she would hear mm -hmm. back from her. And um, so I submitted my query and I waited about... I would say maybe a couple of weeks and then DV pit happened on Twitter and I went ahead and did a little pitch there. She happened to see the pitch and the same day she said that she had just finished reading the first 50 pages and that like next day she offered, she read the book overnight, offered to represent me and of course I went ahead and also received a bunch of different offers that same day from the Twitter pitch contest. So it was all very overwhelming and all very exciting. Forever, nothing was happening. No one was interested. All of a sudden, everyone felt like they were interested. And I think I walked away with maybe, I can't remember, the, I think, was it like seven or eight offers of representation? I can't remember. Um, but I remember thinking, this is insane. I can't believe this is happening to me. I ended up... Uh, uh, partnering with her I think it was either a week or two weeks after so super exciting very fun like dreams oh my gosh I can't even imagine that would be like I think that's every author's dream right to have options it's like you can't even imagine that like getting an agent is so difficult in the first place to have options is like what uh so what advice do you have for um authors who are querying right now oh man the query trenches I definitely would say a couple of different things. One, test the waters if you can. I know for myself personally, every time I finish a manuscript, I was so excited to dive into the query trenches that it burned so many of my chances in the past. Um, and by that, I mean like I was diving in without edits or like I remember someone reached out to me and they asked if it was okay to to put your query on submission without finishing your book. And I just don't know if any of that is super wise. Like while it is so exciting that you just completed a book, which is a celebration in and of itself, definitely take some time to celebrate and then get with a critique partner or a beta reader. Um, have someone look over your book. Definitely give, give and get valuable feedback. And also have someone work your query with you. Because I think a lot of people have really great stories to tell, but maybe they don't know how to market their book in the right way. Um, and their query letter just isn't landing because it's just like there's a disconnect in maybe what their query is saying versus what their book is actually giving. Um, a lot of great agents, though, they look at your query and they usually look at whatever sample pages you give. And so as long as you can have like a good equal, equal medium between a great query letter, as good as you can get it, and then also those great first pages, like having that good combo, I think will get you so far. But definitely take your time, test the water. So if if it if it is your query letter, then maybe you can find out that way. If it's maybe your writing, then you can find out that way. And sometimes you just don't know at all. Like I've had this book go out on on different rounds of queries. My first round of queries, I got a full a few different full requests, and then they all turned out to be just rejections. So it was like I had an idea that maybe my query was doing good the first few pages of maybe the book was doing well, but then after the full, like we were just getting dropped off a bunch. So mm -hmm. it, it depends on the agent. 
also the story, but I definitely think having someone else look over your query and also having someone look at your, at least your first 50 pages is going to work wonders. Do you recommend the authors, I read on your blog too, that you did like kind of like a test query to kind of see <laughs> if what you had was going good. Do you recommend authors doing that? I do. I do. I think like, don't send it to your favorite agents, but send it to some agents that you know are going to respond quickly. And I think that was really helpful to me because what I did was I created a list of agents who responded, quote unquote, overnight, and I submitted it to some of them. I was still like very interested in those agents, and I followed all of their guidelines too. And I wanted to know if they were interested and this was something that they were looking for. If they responded, then there's probably a good chance that someone else I also liked would also respond. So I definitely, definitely would suggest doing that. Um, but only to agents that you know that you like, not just to like be sending like, you know, queries. I definitely like those agents and I was would be happy if they offered representation. That's that's good advice. That makes sense. So publishing with Disney, holy cow, that's like, I would have died. That's amazing. So what has that whole process been like? Oh, it's been a dream. It's been so exciting. It definitely feels very unreal. Like I keep forgetting that it's happening because I just can't believe that it's happening. Um, so after I was agented with Caitlin, we worked on The Undead Truth of Us for about two weeks before going on submission. And if you don't know what submission is, it's basically taking your, it's when your literary agent takes your manuscript and they send it to editors at publishing houses. And she sent it to about, I think it had to have been like 20 editors. Like it was a big round for first submissions. And we started getting in um, a decent amount of interest, a lot of no's. And then Disney and another publishing house were like super, super, super interested. Um, but Disney, like, they were going really, really hard. And, like, both publishing houses were great. Both editors were actually really, really great. And it was kind of a hard decision because at first it was like, well, like, could I go with this other editor? Would it also be amazing to work with them? Probably yes. But then also it's like, it's Disney. And and the editors were really, really good. And so I felt um, very blessed to have two opportunities. But working with my editor at Disney, her name's Christine, She's been a, a dream, honestly. We've done different rounds of revisions for the end of Truth of Us. And each time she's given, like, very valuable feedback. She's also been my, like, champion in, I would say, the whole um, publishing house for me to other editors, to the publicists, to whoever's doing the marketing. And so it's been really, really great working with her. And if I could work with her forever, I probably would. She's so awesome. <laughs> Oh, that's, uh, that's great. It's like, cause when you're dealing with your book, it is like a book baby. So it's like when you're, you know, it's like, you want to make sure that the person sees the same vision that you're having. It's such a hard, it's almost like, I don't know, imagine like, it'd be like dating someone, like when you're finding your agent, or your publisher or your editor, it's like, you have to like, I don't know, learn about each other, figure each other out. But that's, that's great. So <laughs> it's like very important. So like, um, with, with this being your debut novel, how has like marketing been for you? And same with like book talk. It's like everything is so different now with book marketing. How has that been as a debut author and how have like you found the most successful marketing techniques? Yeah, marketing has been a whirlwind and it is hard and it is scary. And I think that's the biggest thing that I feared going into traditional publishing because you hear the stories of like, well, you're getting traditional traditionally published, but you still have to do everything by yourself. That's not totally true. I mean, you definitely, the perks of being traditionally published is you have a whole, you know, industry behind you pushing out your book. And at the end of the day, like, I know that Disney is going to have a bigger reach than I'm going to have by myself. Now, I will say marketing and publicity go hand in hand. They really are, like, giving each other high fives as they pass each other with whatever it is. So I will say some of the most helpful things I've seen with marketing have definitely been TikTok. Like TikTok is making books go viral. Literally Barnes and Noble has a TikTok table because of it. And many people in the industry are looking towards TikTok to set trends, to set standards. If you're on TikTok, like daily, you probably know what 
people are reading. There's the same few mm-hmm. amount of books that are circulating over and over and over again. And whether someone likes it or not, it's still being talked about and it's still getting sales. And I think that that's where the industry is going. I think that if you're not on TikTok, it's fine. Um, but I definitely do think that being on TikTok gives you a leg up because you're, it's just so much easier to connect people with your story if they see your face all the time. Um, I will also say Instagram has been very helpful. Instagram is doing a lot of changes to their algorithm and they're competing with TikTok. And so it's been very interesting being on Instagram when they have like a lot of big pushes and then being on TikTok when they're not having a whole lot of big pushes and trying to figure out mm-hmm. where you in. I don't know. It's like a, t- it's like a toss up. So I, I like both platforms. Um, I think TikTok is just a little bit easier to navigate and Instagram can be hit or miss sometimes. But honestly, the funnest thing about the best thing about marketing is actually liking what you're doing. Like I love my book, so it's easy to talk about it. And I also really like genuinely connecting with other authors and writers and readers on both platforms and so it makes it a lot of fun for me versus I know there's plenty of authors who feel intimidated by this app they feel intimidated by Instagram even they maybe don't feel like they can post like really pretty pictures I can't really either but it's also just being nice to be on those platforms and like connecting with people and building community I think that's probably been the best part so I don't know if that answers the whole question. Like, I feel like marketing as a whole is big, and I feel like it's it's never ending. You're always doing research. Like, I'm always researching trends. I'm always researching hashtags. I'm also always trying to figure out what the like the viral sound is, and even mm-hmm. find sometimes like nothing lands. And so <laughs> yep. it's all science. We're all just testing ourselves all the time and trying to have fun mm-hmm. while doing it. So. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Well, That's why I'm like, I feel like the platforms, the algorithms, they change so much. So it's like, you can't ever like, sometimes like my the views will be great. And then sometimes they go low. So it's like, I feel like yeah. they change everything. So it's like, as long as you're having fun and you're like enjoying it, that's really all that matters. And building community, like you're here to meet other, you know, like-minded people. And so in the end that it's like, if you can market and still have a fun time that then it all works out. So, but Instagram and uh, TikTok are so, they're so crazy different, but that's why I'm like, I feel are, like you have to find the one that works best for you. I so agree. different. I agree. They're so different. And you're right. They do change it a lot. Sometimes it can be very hard to keep up. And there are some times where it can be disheartening. And like when I feel very down, I just try not to get on the app or on any app. Like I just shut myself off of social media and I try to just dive into my app because at the end of the day, TikTok can be gone tomorrow. Instagram can be gone tomorrow but I'm still always going to want to write books. And so if I can't mm-hmm. control what's happening here, I can at least control what's going in my stories. And so I just try to focus on that, but it does. And it can get very overwhelming sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. That's such good advice. It's like, yeah, at the end of the day, you're writing a book for like the love of it, the craft of it, not to go viral on book talk or whatever. It's you got to make sure that you're doing it for the love of it. Yeah, it's an extra, like, bonus if you do, but at the end of the day, you're right. It's, like, it's not what we're here for, guys. It, it, yeah, it would be great, mm-hmm. but also, we're, we're here to create community. We're here to talk about books, and I love mm-hmm. talking about <laughs> I do, too. I'm, like, all about books and, like, writer talk. I, I could talk about it for hours and hours. <laughs> yeah. So, with, yeah. um, I know that you were in the trenches. I want to say it was, like, 10 years that you were in the querying trenches, and so it was a long time. So, during that 10 years, I mean, you had, were there times that you were so down on yourself and you felt like giving up? Yeah. Um, so like, what the- advice like do you have for authors <laughs> feeling that? I would say just keep doing it. If you're passionate about it, if you're not passionate about it, like I do not recommend throwing yourself into something. If it's just genuinely going to make you sad and you feel like you're not getting out what you're putting in I think the reason I stayed in the trenches for so long is because I'm hard-headed and I had a goal and I wanted to make that goal I wanted to make that goal happen regardless of how long it was going to take and I just felt very dedicated but also at the same time like we're human and so I don't feel like that's a fair um I don't know if it's like a fair statement to say that into maybe 
give advice to everyone to be like hard headed. You know, I feel like I am stubborn, but I also just said like I learned a lot in between all my rejections too. Like I know I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rejections in my inbox, but also like I learned a lot throughout the process because each book I wrote, I got better at. And it, and each time I got a rejection, it just pushed me further to get better at my craft. So I took my rejection. I used it to better myself. Um, and also, like, there's probably, I don't know, I feel like timing is everything and everything happens for a reason. And so sometimes I find myself definitely falling to that side of the track as well. But, yeah, I would definitely say if it's your dream, like, don't give up. Find ways that you can get better don't be afraid to ask questions when there were when there are opportunities for you to talk to agents that you're interested in i know there had been lots of opportunities on twitter where like agents would open up like their q a's or like there would be events that you could go to i've never gone to an event but there, there have been events that people can go to where you can like actually talk to agents face to face and ask them like do you know what didn't work and i have been able to do that on the internet and have been able to ask like hey i'm just curious like what didn't work for you. Like you read these pages and you rejected me, but like, I'm curious to know if you can share some of that feedback and could I get better from that? And some agents were able to share. And honestly, a lot of agents just said, it just wasn't the one for me. I've had some agents that were like, it was just the word count. Literally they read the whole query. sounded like a great story, but your word count was just too small. And with your comps that you use, it didn't make sense to me, which made me think your story wasn't done yet. And I just thought, Wow, that's very interesting feedback. It's also very subjective, too, because other agents will say opposite. So it's subjective. All of it's subjective. Keep going. Ask questions if you can. And um, definitely celebrate the small things. Because if you, if you keep on that track, you keep celebrating the small things, you might find yourself doing the thing that you want. But also find another way to get yeah. it, too. You can't get it through traditional publishing. Like, this is not the only route. Like, it's not. No. Um I'm just again very hard headed and very stubborn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I think that's good. It's like you can't be afraid of the failure, especially when it comes to writing, because it's like it's inevitable. It's going to happen. It's like you're going to. I think like we come as in writers, it's like, oh, I can write a sentence, so I should be able to write a book really easy. And it's no, it's like learning the piano or anything else. Like it takes a while to like learn everything. You have like world building, dialogue, character development, story, like plotting. It's like, you have to learn all these different layers. And it's like, you don't, I mean, I didn't know that at all when I first came into it. And so it's like really hard to like not give up in the beginning, but it's like, if you keep seeing through all that, you know, you can actually in the end, hopefully one day achieve your dream. <laughs> so Brittany, what can we, <laughs> what can we expect from you in the future? Obviously you're going to still write because obviously it's your love but I mean so we can expect more books but what else can we expect from you yeah definitely more books I plan on sticking around on TikTok and Instagram Twitter is like depends on the day but um I hopefully more books that are young adult contemporary horror or speculative that's like my jam I love mashing up genres I think it's so much fun my next story which hasn't been announced yet but is coming soon does play with time travel in alternate dimensions and spooky alternate dimensions. And so um, I'm hoping that into the world, it also plays with family ties and um, family relationships and how they can affect you slash how far would you go for them. And so I'm very, very, very excited for my next book. Um, I cannot wait to talk about it more and broadly. Um, and yeah, that is what you can totally awesome. expect more books. <laughs> Perfect. I am so excited to watch that whole journey. So thank you, Brittany, for coming on here today and talking to us. It was such a pleasure. And her book comes out on August 9th, uh, The Undead Truth of Us, and available for pre-order now. And I can't wait. It's going to be so exciting. And then other than that, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>